Hello and welcome to this discussion of thematic investing through passives. Today, I'm joined by Siddharth Srivastava, Head of ETF Products at Mire Asset Investment Managers and Ashish Menon, Senior Mutual Fund Analyst at Value Research. Welcome, gentlemen. So, uh, Siddharth, the first question to you. Can you explain how does thematic investing through passive strategies, how does it differ from active management? Also, if you could share some insights on, you know, the benefits and drawbacks of going passive in this space. So, first of all, let's understand what is thematic investing. Right. It's uh, about investing in a macro trend, mm -hmm. which you believe is scalable mm -hmm. and is there for a long time. Okay, so for example, when very simple thematic investing is investing into consumption based based products, then there is a uh, healthcare based uh, thematic investing. In recent time, there are a lot of new themes which have emerged, yes. disruptive themes like uh, AI, uh, like EV. In fact, in India, you have a lot of keenness towards manufacturing also. So these are new themes and people sorts of are looking at them because as I mentioned, uh, it's probably a right time. Uh, these are scalable. Uh, these are macro trends. A huge value chain and supply chain is involved in, in this in this theme. And if you enter at a right time, uh, you can generate a reasonable amount of returns. Uh, uh, and, and probably it can fit well in your overall portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what Passive does now, right? Passive sorts of does it in a very method based manner. Let's say there is a disruptive theme called defense. Okay, right now in India, defense is, is very popular. Mm. Or let's say there is EV, which is getting very popular in India. Now, there is multiple ways to take exposure in this theme. You don't know how that will happen on the active side. Let's say when it comes to EV or defense, whether the active fund manager will take exposure in x company or not or x, x segment or not in passive since it is rule based you know what the fund will try to do mm. for example uh, in ev you can have exposure in the entire value chain starting from battery production to tech providers to auto component providers to actual automobile manufacturers right or you can construct an underlying benchmark using only two, three components, let's say only auto component providers and automobile manufacturers. So there are multiple ways in which you can approach thematic investing. And what uh, passive bring is transparency and a method driven approach. I think that is very important why thematic investing is grown so popular globally because it provides a very, as I mentioned, transparent way through which you can take exposure in cryptos in AI, in EV, in semiconductors, etc. And uh, people want to take exposure in themes rather than uh, aspiration to outperform it. That if you want, if you ask someone that, no, I want to take exposure in EV theme or a defense theme, I'm not looking psychologically in outperforming that theme. That which typically comes when you invest in a large cap category or a mid cap category on the, on the active side. Also, one thing which passive does is uh, it can be diversified it can be let's say because of rule based more risk averse if a method is made in that manner all right but you know when it comes to thematic investing cyclicality can be a real challenge there so how do you tackle that issue and especially when a particular theme you know it starts losing its appeal due to shifting market conditions no, i think uh, I believe that more than cyclicality, uh, the issue is timing, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, why does anyone invest in theme? Because uh, he or she believes that growth is about to come. That theme is going to expand in future, uh, let's say five year or seven year time. Why people are so gung ho on manufacturing right now? Because people believe that PLI, which came out recently, uh, not long ago is going to propel this entire sector right and they believe that for next five years seven years that's pli will create a boom in in automobile in 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 your phone manufacturing and in, in chemicals etc and that's why people invest in in thematic investing so the first issue is timing are you entering a theme at the right time because if you enter too late maybe most of the story has already happened will four years down the line 
entering into manufacturing be similarly attractive? I think that will be a very important question three year or four year down the line, right? So I think timing is more important. And also the importance is to understand whether the, uh, the theme itself is scalable or not. And how much risk should I associate with a particular theme? For example, when it comes to, again, I'm taking manufacturing as an example, you have multiple components to manufacturing, right? You have uh, healthcare also, you have capital goods also, you have automobiles also, you have consumer durables also. But when it comes to defense, you have just defense companies. When it comes to EV, it becomes more uh, narrower compared to manufacturing. So uh, you get exposed to risk when your approach or a target of a theme is, let's say, confined within a sector or very few sectors. So then risk become an issue. But if it is diversified enough like a manufacturing or even a consumption, let's say, where you can take exposure in FMCGs, durables, even fintechs, etc. And it is more diversified approach. I think uh, timing, scalability and risk of a theme is more important than cyclicality itself. All right. And who would you say is the ideal investor for thematic investing through passive strategies? So I think uh, thematic investing is not something which you do as a first round of investment. If you are taking exposure in equity markets, you obviously start with a large cap, mid cap allocation, etc. Take exposure to a broader market. And then when you have sorts of uh, enough understanding of the market, thematic investing can be for anyone. Right. Uh, will I suggest a broader theme? to someone who is, let's say, a bit more risk averse, I think answer is yes. But will I suggest a narrower theme, which I mentioned earlier in my answer, to a risk averse investor, answer is no. So it also depends what sort of theme I'm talking about. Is it a broad based theme? Is it a very, very narrow theme? So it also depends uh, on investor risk profile. It depends on what sort of theme I'm talking about. It, it depends on at what time I'm talking about, whether I'm talking from a tactical manner that no, this theme probably, let's say a chemical uh, uh, centric or an energy centric theme, you can play in a tactical manner also. Mm -hmm. But something like a, a consumption or manufacturing, you typically play for a from a long term point of view. So I think all those uh, will go into uh, answering whether it is appropriate for an investor or not. But I think uh, more important is that it should form part of your satellite portfolio. Mm -hmm. It is typically not part of your core, core portfolio. So important is that you manage your allocation a bit lower than what you are doing towards a large cap or a mid cap, etc. And then uh, also look at your overall portfolio. Let's say a lot of people may have a reasonable exposure towards BFSI, why large cap funds or a flexi cap fund. So does adding a BFSI centric theme uh, makes sense for an investor answer could could be no if he already has a lot of exposure towards that probably uh, adding a different theme which also sorts of completes the portfolio and reduce the overall risk uh, may be a better approach all right ashish moving to you now when it comes to integrating thematic passive funds into a broader investment portfolio what's your advice so first thing an investor needs to understand is that you know, thematic funds by nature are more volatile and more cyclical than your diversified equity funds. So because of that, it should not be a part of your core equity portfolio and rather you should supplement your core equity portfolio with these kinds of thematic funds. Mm -hmm. So you take your diversified equity funds and build a core portfolio. And once you have that, then you can look at these thematic funds to supplement it with maybe a 5 to 10 percent allocation and also keep in mind that you know have a hard stop at 20 percent once it hits that trim it down again you know don't go overboard with it now and another big thing that you can learn from what has happened in the past is that you should have a very long investment horizon with it because then you can address the risk of entering the wrong theme at the wrong time because this has happened in the past in if you look at the infrastructure funds investors were investing in 2007 8 
and they had to wait another a decade or more to be able to say okay we were better off investing in these funds rather than something like a sensex or an nft okay now siddharth looking ahead what emerging themes do you think are poised to drive this growth in uh, thematic investing through passive strategies so i think uh, uh, globally a lot of unique things are happening mm. uh, india not so much so uh, we have uh, very interesting products globally across uh, for example uh, on the healthcare side genomics health tech if you look at consumption side new age consumption right uh, when you look at manufacturing robotics uh, theme is getting popular if you look at uh simple it you are looking at artificial intelligence semiconductors etc uh even uh, themes on side of cryptos uh, um and uh, blockchains are getting popular so you have lot of thematic play which is happening globally uh especially in us in 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 developed markets japan korea europe etc and people are obviously uh jumping onto the bandwagon because because if you time it right uh you might be able to generate good returns right but timing is important right in india i think it filters down to a less number of emerging themes i, I spoke about manufacturing is something which is uh, which is uh, popular then you have obviously uh, uh ev which is getting very popular then i think you have emerging uh, digital play in india we'll see probably more companies getting listed on the fintech and and e-commerce side which will sorts of uh, uh make that more investable then you have tourism defense etc which is which is sorts of getting few eyeballs recently and then you have traditional themes like healthcare consumption infra like you mentioned so uh, in india i think uh, you have traditional themes and less uh disruptive emerging themes as of now but i hope that with more companies getting listed and eventually indian companies also participating in in these disruptive technologies we'll have those play also in indian stock markets maybe 3 5 years down the line all right you listed some of the popular ones is there any particular theme that you are particularly excited about Oh, I'm excited about a lot of themes, uh, uh, especially on the on the tech side. Mm -hmm. So, artificial intelligence is something which which uh, uh, I am very sorts of bullish on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have all these big techs uh, which are participating in those in a in a very uh, in a very significant manner. See, uh, if I draw a comparison, it is like a like a Kodak moment, right? Because uh, Kodak couldn't. transition to digital as quickly as possible and became irrelevant and that is what is happening in in multiple industries right ev and hybrids are disrupting automobiles automation is disrupting industrials you have fintechs disrupting bfsi you have ai uh, disrupting internet right internet and uh, tech segment so you have changes happening in all the industries at a same time mm. and i think that and the and the companies which will adopt which will become be at the forefront of these changes will do well and that is why i think i am looking at this space very keenly again like he mentioned that it is also important to understand that thematic investing bring its own set of risk it can be a narrow approach or it can be a broader approach and both have different sorts of risk profiles so it is very important for investor to understand what he is getting into at what time he is getting into and and also have a sort of target in mind that this is the amount of allocation which i'll have and uh, this is the horizon which i'm looking at because in theme it is important to enter and then exit also because you have ultimately you are investing to make money right right okay now the last question is for both of you how should investors differentiate between themes that are likely to be short lived versus those with long term potential i think uh, here obviously a bit of analytics is required uh, you, you need to understand theme right and look at its scalability mm -hmm. right and look at the uh, 
opportunity it, it addresses right uh, when it comes to again uh, manufacturing yes it's a broad based theme the opportunity set is huge you have not only uh, Indian markets where you can cater to, but export is a big, big market. So is manufacturing a big scalable theme? Answer is yes, right? Uh, when it comes to, uh, let's say, uh, probably it won't stand true for India, but when it comes to blockchain, let's say, mm -hmm. it's uh, how, what sort of opportunity set uh, uh, exists for blockchain, right? Do I see uh, that opportunity set getting address, addressed in next five years, seven years, right? Uh, what what would the revenue stream? A lot of question mark, right? Mm -hmm. So there you will be probably a bit more cautious that that okay, uh, even if it is attractive enough, is it a long term? Yes, it it is long term. Then is it scalable enough? Mm -hmm. uh, will it be sizable enough for me to participate in those in that particular uh, uh, industry? So you'll have to ask these very relevant questions mm -hmm. and then uh, pick up the right theme, which whichever you want to uh, invest in. So narrow theme is also not bad. But you have to understand the risk, right? Uh, a broader theme may not give you that much return, which a narrower theme is um, giving. It may be possible, but you have to take a very sorts of uh, 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 known call that that yes, I know the risk, I know the potential, I know the scalability, and then I'm investing in this particular theme. All right, Ashish, final word from you. I have a slightly different view on this. Uh, first and foremost, you are a mutual fund investor. So you have decided to entrust your money with an AMC and let them do the investing for you. So this is not something that you should be too much bothered about. You know, it is something for the fund managers and their research team to figure out. If you look at it, most of the, you know, thematic funds, they are launched because the AMC, they have some sort of belief that there is a long term potential for this theme. Now, having said that, you can invest when you see that there is a reasonable amount of performance to back the claim that there is a long term potential to this theme. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in the midst of a bull run. So it is exactly not a right time to judge if a theme is going to go on for a very long time. So rather than that, you judge it over a full market cycle. So and again, you have to understand that, you know, even if you choose not to invest in thematic funds, it's not going to break your portfolio or anything like that. So the best thing to do is that, you know, you take a very long horizon and invest and give a small allocation in your portfolio to these kinds of thematic funds. All right. With that, it's a wrap on this discussion. Thank you both of you for joining in and for your insights on this. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.